These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There's a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos dot htm. Or you can just use the link in the info box. Thank you. Well, last time we talked about how this term, every week you're going to be exposed to a couple of new concepts, and it's important while you're digesting the new concepts, not to forget the old ones. Let's just make sure we uh, re remember the stuff from last time. Do you remember what is the symbol for charge? Uh, Q. Right, either capital or lowercase Q. And what is the unit for charge? Uh, Coulomb. Good. And is that a vector or a scalar? It's a scalar. Because we know you wouldn't talk about five coulombs north. It doesn't have a direction. Good. Well, what is the symbol for electric force? Just like any force, it can be just called F. And what's the unit for the electric force? Because it's a force. Good. And is that a vector or a scalar? That is a vector. That's right. You didn't sound 100% confident yeah. about that, but that's the right answer. Do forces have directions? Yes, it would make sense to talk about a 5 Newton force north, whereas you wouldn't talk about 5 Coulombs north. The other important distinction is, do we ever break forces into components? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's what you do with vectors. Okay. Do we ever break charges into components? No, we never talked about Q sub X and Q sub Y. Yeah. In fact, that's one of the main reasons why we need to know that this is a vector and this is a scalar, because we need to know which things we need to break into components and which things we don't. Mm -hmm. And the other concept we talked about was electric field. Well, what's the symbol for the electric field? Good. Capital E. Not F, but E. Good. Very important. What is the unit for electric field? Um, it's, I think it's newtons per coulomb, maybe? Or That's something. right. That That's it? right. That's good. It's good that you remembered that. However, it's important um, to be confident about that unit because as we talked about last time, understanding the unit for the concept is a real key way to understand what the concept means. For example, suppose the electric field at this point is 5 newtons per coulomb. Do you remember from last time, how would we interpret this? What does this tell us about this point in space? I think that for, for one, a charge of 1 coulomb, there's 5 a force of five newtons. Good. If we put, so we can use the trick we've seen in the past of putting a one down here. And this is telling us that if we put a one coulomb test charge at this point, then it would feel a force of five newtons. So understanding the units for the electric field are the key for knowing what the electric field means. Good. How about if I put a three coulomb test charge here, what electric force would it feel? Yeah. If there's 5 newtons for 1 coulomb, there should be 3 times as much for 3 coulombs, or 15. So again, knowing the units is the key to working with the electric field. So it's good that you remember that, and you want to keep reviewing that until that's something that you're very confident of as well. And is the electric field a vector or a scalar? A vector. Because it does have a direction. In fact, last time we talked about how to find the direction of the electric field. Mm -hmm. So is the electric field the kind of thing that we might have to break into components? Yeah. Because it's a vector. We didn't do any examples last time of breaking the electric field into components, but we talked about how you might do that using our, our um, distance and field triangles. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> all right, so like I said, each week it's important uh, to keep reviewing what are all the concepts you've seen so far, and especially what are their units. say we have a positive source charge, what would be the direction of the electric field at this point? Up, down, left, right, northeast, or southwest? Uh, up. That's right. Good. How did you know that? Because if the test charge is positive, the electric field points away. Good. That's right. Electric fields point away from a positive test charge. 
So the electric field over here would look like this. And the electric field over here would look like this. I'm not trying to get the, the lengths right, just mm -hmm. the directions. Always pointing away from a positive test charge. Now let's introduce a new concept, although you might have already seen that last week, electric field lines. The electric field lines are a way to convey information about what the electric field is like around a source charge. So remember, this is the source charge, so it's creating these electric fields. And remember that the electric field is a property of space. Even if there's no test charge here, there's still an electric field here. There's an electric field everywhere in space here. Well, we can draw electric field lines around here that represent that. And the way you draw those is the electric field lines at a point in space are tangent to the electric field vector at that point in space. The field line would be tangent to the electric field vector. Well, here the electric field vector is vertical. I'm sorry, here the uh, electric, yeah, here the vector is vertical, so the field line would also be vertical. And that would be true all along this line. Whereas here, the field is horizontal, so the field line would also be horizontal. And here it would be vertical again. And here again, it would be horizontal. So now these represent electric field lines. We can still show which way the electric field lines are pointing. These elect the electric field lines point in the same direction as the electric field vectors. So the electric field lines here are pointing away from this positive charge. Now, in reality, there are an infinite number of electric field lines because there's an electric field at every point in space. I've only drawn four so far, but there's really an infinite number at every point in space. Well, for practice, Let's draw the electric field lines around this negative source charge. What, the, what would they look like? Um, they would be pointing towards the negative charge. Yeah, they'd be the same as this, but they'd be pointing towards the negative charge because we learned last week that electric field vectors point away from positive source charges and towards negative source charges. I'm only going to draw four lines but I could have drawn an infinite number of lines. <clears throat> Let's talk a little bit more about electric field lines. It turns out that when the electric field lines are drawn close to each other, that represents a strong electric field. And when the electric field lines are drawn far away from each other, that represents a weak electric field. Now, of course, in reality, there's an electric field line at every point in space, but we're we're only going to draw a certain number of them. And after we're finished drawing the electric field lines that we're going to draw, where they're close is where the electric field is strong. And where they're far away from each other is where the electric field is weak. So for example, can let's you, compare. Can I ask you a question yeah. about that? We were talking in class about how he did a, a demo where he like, touched something that was charged. I made a pair and he's running away and it was going to stand on it. And that was because the hairs on the leg had become positively charged and they wanted to like, get us far away from each other right. as they could. And I, I guess I'm just I'm thinking about it. What if, it seems like char or electric fields would be stronger the farther apart they are from each other because it's like they're pushing far away from one another. OK, yeah, let's try to, to clarify that. Okay. I guess the basic problem there is um, don't confuse electric field lines and test charges. It's true that test charges try to get far away from other test charges. Or in general, um, like charges try to spread out. So if the, if the instructor has charged their hair, so they have a bunch of negative charges, say, on their hair, well, then all those negative charges are going to try to get far away from all the other negative charges. Um, however, the electric field line, remember, doesn't represent charges. It's just a completely different thing. Remember, there doesn't have to be any charges at these points in space. This is just a property of space. So, basic, uh, so one way to answer your question is that, uh, that we're just talking about two different things. Yeah. So it shouldn't be surprising that they follow different patterns. Okay. It's true that a big negative, if you have big negative, if you have big charges, they're going to try to spread out as much as possible. Mm -hmm. but that's just a completely different thing than talking about electric field lines in okay. space. Okay. Well, as we talk about this a little bit more, maybe this will it'll make more sense. In fact, let's do that now. Let's compare the electric field lines at this point and at this point. So at this point, are the electric field lines relatively close to each other or far from each other? Uh, compared to this point. Close. Yeah. Um, to go to the next electric field line, we would just go like this, a pretty short distance. Whereas to get from here to the next electric field line would be a bigger arc. So here's where the electric field lines are close. 
Would that tend to indicate that the electric field here is strong or weak? Um, strong. Now, just based on our common sense, is this where we would have expected the electric field to be stronger? Why should the electric field be stronger here than here? It's closer to the temperature. Yeah. It's closer to the source charge. Remember, this is the source of the electric field. While the closer you are to the electric field, it stands to reason that the closer together the electric field, um, that the stronger the electric field would, would be. So um, we would have expected this to be where the electric field was stronger anyway, and then that's confirmed by the fact that these electric field lines are closer to each other. So the closer the electric field lines are to each other, that we interpret that, the closer the ones that we've drawn, then we would interpret that as a stronger electric field.